heroic women, strong and powerful and destined by tragedy. Why does such a character make for the finest operas, beautiful ballets and the most profound works of art? Leading spirits like these have inevitably become the subject of many Tim Cantor paintings. Some are fictional. Some are veritable historic figures that have bridged into Tim Cantor's imagination. The dramatized melding of beauty and tragedy haunts him and drives him to invent his own versions of these fabled heroines. Manon, Charlotte Corday, Madame Butterfly, and Juliet of the Capulets have all inspired indirect painted depictions. Moreover, there is one proverbial spirit he has repeated, yet in vastly different ways. Joan of Arc. Tim Cantor has completed two contrasting portrayals of this heroine, one a warrior and one of grace, both with the kindred same title as Tchaikovsky's opera, the Maid of Orléans. The Maid of Orléans was indeed Joan of Arc's legendary nickname and an appellation befitting for both her strength and innocence. In the first of Tim Cantor's two versions, she stands strong, suited in armour. Painterly, this armour is masterfully rendered. In it, there is a depth of glazing and detail that is without compare thus drawing your attention and seeing that this suit of armour is important, not only in the care that he took painting it, but in the rule of its purpose. It clarifies that you are looking at a fighter. On the shoulder of Joan of Arc sits an ermine, more accurately a white ferret, who carries with it a traditional symbol of purity and would face death before staining its honour. The entirety of this painting is the portrayal of heroism, dominant and strong, yet dignified. And then there is the second composition, painted many years later and bound to a 19th century frame carved from woods of the Black Forest. Tim Cantor's version has softened with his age. Joan of Arc now stands balletic in the woods of her story still innocent, still alone, still yet to be affected by the wars of man. Perhaps this softer role comes as a direct result of the artist's repeated visits to the Mariinsky Theatre, where Tchaikovsky's original opera first premiered in 1881. Perhaps there is an unsaid influence that drifts through time through the beams of this building that housed Joan of Arc as a spirit of opera instead of the soldier. And perhaps Tim Cantor's small painting finds added tenderness from a visit to her grave memorial in Rouen, France. Here the reality sinks in that this is the ghost of a 19-year-old girl pulled into a fire of war and anger. To date, these are Tim Cantor's two paintings of this one soul, created from two times of influence, two portrayals that interpret both the legendary militant heroine and the innocent young girl, lost in dance, astray in the woods. Thank you.